What's up, guys? It's Shana, and welcome back to the Ehang Podcast. And this episode is brought to you by the Makeover Guys, which is a property solution company that I am working in. Just to put it out there, right? And they are a property solution company that helps property owners and property investors to furnish their property either for own stay or for investment purposes. They have just recently opened a brand new experience center in M Hub Kota Damansara. Amazing experience. So if you have absolutely no clue at all about renovation and you are about to get your keys, I would strongly suggest to just stop by, pay a visit, then maybe just get a quotation and you work your way from the quotation itself. So you can do comparison from there. And personally for my my own unit like in fact i am now right below my brand new home that is under renovation under the team as well i'll just put the link down below go check them out and today we'll answer a question from email this is from peggy dear sean i hope this e- message finds you well i wanted to take a moment to express my appreciation for your youtube videos and podcasts i find your explanations of the property market and economy to be both clear and insightful I'm reaching out to seek your advice regarding my current situation. I am 41. After saving diligently for the past 20 years, I am not sure what I could do with my savings and property. I own a leasehold property in PJ, which is fully paid off, but its current market value is around 600000 lower than my purchase price of 620000 While the location is convenient with LRT and malls, I find the noise from the nearby MRT to be a bit disruptive. I am also worried the price will drop due to leasehold. Currently, I have about 600,000 in cash, not including my EPF. And I'm contemplating whether to sell my property and rent a unit at about 3,000 to 4,000, which is walking distance to my workplace to save on commuting time and parking costs, which is about 500 to 600 per month, or to purchase a new property potentially in PJ. I am considering factors like job locations, I might or might not change job, also considering the university location for my child another 5 to 8 years down the road. To make it even more complicated, I do live with my partner sometimes who lives about 30km away but I feel that I need a place of my own just to feel secure and also save time commuting to work. I would greatly appreciate your thoughts on the following. Number 1. Should I sell my current property considering its leasehold status or to rent it out? Number two, would it be beneficial to rent a place near my workplace instead of purchasing a new property at this time? If purchasing, should I consider new launches or subcon properties? Thank you for your time and guidance. I wish you and your family continued happiness and good health. Warm regards. Thank you very much, Peggy. For the email, I think it's rather direct. So let's take this one by one. First of all, right, at 41 years old, I think you have achieved a lot. So it means, right, in 20 years time, you have saved, not only saved, you have cleared up your housing loan at 620000 So the market value now is only about 600000 So, okay, let's just talk about this first, right? Does it make sense to pay off your property early? Uh, conventionally, if you take a housing loan to finance a property, technically, in the end of 30 to 35 years, you will pay, including interest, about double the price of the initial property price. So it means, let's say, if you were to take 600000 in 30 to 35 years, after paying at 4% to 4.5% interest, you'll pay about double, which is $1.2 million. That's the argument where a lot of people keep saying, right? You got to always put your money to settle the housing loan. If not, all your money goes to interest. Uh, is that statement true? Uh, yes. But will I do it? Um, It depends on several factors. First, number one is your knowledge on what to do with your money. If you don't know what else to do with your money, if you are not investment savvy, you are not a risk taker, you don't really like financial stuff, in my opinion, you want to pay off extra just to knock off the housing loan interest. I think that's a very solid strategy. It means that you don't know what to do to grow your money, at least save your money. Ma. So from there, you will save more than just 4% if you were to compound everything. So if you are this nature of person, I think it's great. If you know what to do your money, like for property investors, what we usually think is we use the least amount of money possible to gain ownership of a particular property. So we get the rights to rent the property out and generate income from it. And the goal is to have the rental covering installment and I hold it for the next 30 years. Bro, but the interest is going to be double the property price. I know, but did I pay for it? Minimal. 
mostly the equity build is all paid up by tenant and inflation. But the real game changer is this. Lately, uh, Bank Negara has announced this new term for refinancing. So whoever that's refinancing their property, technically last time, if you were to fully pay your property, you can refinance the property up to 80% means for 600,000 this particular apartment that you will have right you can take out about 480,000 in cash technically then you will drag it for the next 30 years means now you can push the property charge to the bank take out 480,000 cash and this process is pretty instant actually as long as the valuation can support as long as your personal income can support no issue but now if you want to cash out the difference the entire calculation for refinancing then has been updated it's only limited to 10 years tenure means last time we can drag to 30 years so i can actually cash out way more money using the income that i have but now they limit the loan tenure into 10 years calculation so technically if you can take out 480,000, right the rule of thumb is about one third of it so now you can only cash out 160,000 around that so suddenly with this rule in place it shows that the government is taking actions against property speculation and investment activities because this used to be the main strategy for property investors to roll our equity like for me personally every 10 years i've done once only lah, every 10 years i will refinance take out a difference and relocate those resources that i have either into properties or other form of investments now i can't so personally now i think the better way is to have a full flexi loan or somewhat a semi flexi loan also will do and the strategy is to put in the amount of money i have into the housing loan not settling the loan but just to park my money within technically then is to use the housing loan like an overdraft facility especially and this works perfectly for those who are commission based who are running businesses right sometimes when you collect a lot of money from your clients you don't know where to put you can just put into your housing loan and knock off the interest calculation since it's calculated daily anyway so for those who don't understand the interest is actually calculated based on the difference of loan amount that you owe to the bank for example i owe the bank 1 million there will be a daily interest on 1 million every day but let's say don't know what happened i got 500,000 i can put in the 500,000 into the account and the interest will be calculated based on the outstanding amount which is 500,000 that i owe the bank and it will be calculated daily if there is any form of emergency later i can always withdraw out the 500,000 out from the bank again so this is serving as an overdraft and this is perfect for those who don't know what to do with the money the next thing to we'll talk about then will be this least whole characteristic of properties especially around pj area so i have done some study lately I, this got me by surprise there's a project next to a project that we visited called panorama next to it there's an old project called shang villa s-h-a-n-g not the shang villa of hotels but it's shang villa it's an old building and what happened is they converted the leasehold title into freehold so now there's this hint where it's actually possible to convert leasehold properties into freehold and not only in Selangor so in Penang also there has been projects where the whole community of owners they come together and they pay about one to two thousand per owner because since everyone is going to be sharing the cost of conversion for a very small land only ma. so if one piece of land you got like one thousand owners actually you divide by 1,000, nothing much like the conversion fee. For this project, next to Queens Bay Mall, from 60 over years, then they renewed back to 99, right? What happened to the property price? It increased by 50%, which makes everybody very, very happy. So when you pay 1,000 to 2,000, right, suddenly your property price double. Wow, so everybody loved it. And then suddenly, this kind of move will also be somewhat like a political move for the state government now if you were to just have any projects where the lease is left like 18 years or 15 years right and the government has announced they want to take back the land for the property it's going to be that perfect opportunity for the opposition to squeeze saying that nah you see the current government take homes away from the rakyat so i doubt any state government will be taking back any form of leasehold projects lah. that's my personal thought then it also means that moving forward there's not much difference between leasehold properties and freehold properties anymore 
because technically if the government really wants the land of your project they'll just use the compulsory acquisition act on you buy your land by force of course they'll pay you still market price la. and they'll use it to build mrt3 they'll build highway ke, or whatsoever la. so if they really need your land i don't care whether it's leasehold or freehold they will eventually also take your land however the only issue now will be financing banks are still very close-minded towards leasehold properties so this differs from bank to bank some for lease be below 70 years some for lease below 60 years the amount of financing is actually very restricted that's why it, in order to exceed such property then becomes the main challenge but in my opinion i think the banks or the end financiers will need an update on this policy like actually because now if you look into the leasehold properties right most of these leasehold properties are in prime locations they tell me just because an arbitrary tenure of a land you cannot finance the project mm. leasehold freehold for high rises right doesn't mean anything really but for landed property yes it means the world because landed properties technically the main essence is the land ma. and it's also because of romantic reasons la, because of this legacy issue la. i buy landed i want to pass to my kid ma. apparently apartment don't need to pass <laughs> but in your story here when you buy 620 but after paying off the apartment is now 600,000 so does it mean uh, paying off the project it's a good move <laughs> uh not really la and that's the reality even with the convenience of lrt and malls i think you stay around klana jaya area lo, or tama bahagia around pj the lrt route la so the moral of this segment of the story here is not all projects will make money but to think on the positive side you have saved up your rent eventually and i do agree with your statement because now you have a kid and you are staying occasionally with your partner which is 30 km away i do agree that all women must have your own place that is something that i stand strong with because nothing is absolutely guaranteed already like love or whatsoever right bonding marriage or social contract whatever you, how you look at it lah. the most secure thing is still having money in your own savings account and a property under your name especially for my sisters and aunties out there right this is something that no bullshit on right this one must be solid and this is some word of advice for those who are actually dating also like just because the nature of property not many females like it they think that it's complicated la. they think it is ma fun la. i don't know what it is why not many girls likes to talk about property or likes to understand property most of my property knowledge comes from my aunt which is a woman that's why i seriously don't get it and because of that they will just chin chai want to share property either with the husband or the boyfriend because the boyfriend or husband just do the research and pick the right property so they can share him honestly speaking you really think they research properly meh or they just tikam tikam uh see what their friends say they just follow lo. that's why i do really hope more female more ladies more girls more female audiences right take charge and take control of your own investment journey and your own financial matters it's not that complicated right, actually but this is a very convenient way to say i just support my husband let my boyfriend make the choices la, respect him la. <sighs> and coming back to your main question should you sell your current property then to rent a place closer to your workplace to save on commuting time and parking costs um okay so we go one by one uh. should you sell your current property because it's leasehold that's why you want to sell or you prefer to rent it out to me rent it out first uh what we predict in the investment world in my investment community is bull run is coming and if you look into all data from napic if you look into all the news right now property counters land deals in the industry all are very positive indicating that a bull run is coming in high probability so i think if i were to sell sell later not now and this is another segment of why i don't like paying off debts especially housing loans because if you were to declare 
your rental as income, which you should anyway, part of the deduction of the income is actually loan interest. That can go up to 80 to 85% of our monthly installment amount. For example, if I collect rent 3,000 and my installment is actually 3,000, so 80% of 3,000 is 2,400, right? So technically, my income is only 600 because 3,000 minus 2,004 in, in the housing loan interest, so I only earn 600 and then I need to minus off my agent fee something Sometimes this one spoil, that one spoil. So I don't have to pay actually anything much. I still declare, I still declare my rental income just that I don't have to pay out everything because still a lot of expenses with it. So the best part is I'm building equity the right way. But now if you fully paid the property already, there's no interest to knock off. So you need to declare your rental income all the way 3000 means 3000 there's nothing to deduct but all the way and tests agent fees and things like that lor. but again this subjects to whether are you comfortable with your name having a lot of debts like i can sleep perfectly knowing that i owe the banks a lot of money lah. but if you don't i think paying off is still not wrong it's not wrong right just a better use of resources that's all then the second question would it be beneficial to rent a place near my workplace instead of purchasing a new property personally i would rent because you are at 41 so i don't think you are at your peak yet maybe at 45 or 48 then you will be at your peak then you will just milk the all the way to 55 and why tie yourself to a high commitment thingy for a temporary job right jobs are temporary in my opinion unless you're running your own business then fine but personally in order to save time in traveling and car park fees right i think i would rent because that will boost my productivity and my mental health also so instead of traveling two hours or one and a half hours to office to and flow three hours every day right i'll always try to live as close as possible if i can with if i don't have ties to families and commitments and things like that i will move as close as possible because time is the ultimate currency why waste so much time on the road feeling frustrated the journey go to work is more tiring than the work itself why put ourselves in that situation so i will definitely live closer and I will rent a place. But this is my twist. Since you have 600,000 cash, I would suggest not to buy a place just to stay, but buy it with the mindset of investment. So if you are working around a commercial area or an office tower or things like that, with the same mindset, where would I stay that is closer to the office tower? Oh, this is project A, B, C. Within A, B, C, look at the rent versus the housing price and the monthly installment. If the property can generate about 5-6% to 6 yield, I think you should buy it with the mindset of renting it out later if you change your job. Okay, so how do you calculate yield? The rough calculation, lah. so a lot of people will want to detail into very detail. To me, it's just the quick calculation where the rental amount times 12 divided by the property price. So you will get a rough estimate about 5%, 6%, which is good, 7% is excellent. A lot of properties in JB right now is going about 10 to 11%. Anything below four, then don't go up. Why do I use the yield calculation in your situation right now? Because you are 41. Maximum, you can take loan. A lot of banks, they will approve up to 65, only some might approve to 70. So if you are lucky up to 70, right, they will calculate your loan amount based on 29 years instead of 35 years and it makes a lot of difference if the banks only calculate based on 65 years right your loan tenure is 25 years and it will greatly affect your monthly payout therefore it's even harder to get a rental amount higher than your installment amount so the best way is to actually use the yield calculation and that would be my recommendation if you were to invest so why i suggest sub project instead of a brand new project is because something that we discussed in the previous episode. If you were to walk into any brand new sales gallery right now, as an individual, you will be paying the highest price in the market. But if you're a family member to the developer, if you are a associate or a working partner, past purchaser, son of a VIP, you get discounts for it. Another way is to go really early, but, but eventually it's still calculated based on RRP, the retail price. So based on the four different buying channels, new property, sub-sale, auction, and bulk purchases. Unless you're buying from bulk purchases from new property developers, right? I would strongly suggest to go sub-sale where you get absolute certainty. The main hurdle why people don't buy sub-sale properties is because they got no cash. In this situation, you got. And that puts you in a very good position to negotiate. 
So coming back, uh, your existing house, I will rent it out. Then for your own, I will prioritize renting first because I don't want to fix a temporary problem with a permanent solution. Okay, at most you're gonna work for another 10 years. Why take a 30 years loan for a 10 years commitment? Right? Then for your kid who is going to uni, let him travel and let him rent outside. There's nothing wrong with renting. As I always say, why buy the cow for a cup of milk? They are better used for the limited resources that we have. If you want to buy, my suggestion is always to buy in a situation where I get to determine the price better. So it means I get to negotiate. Because I always believe that great deals are crafted not found. So with the same mindset of renting a place near your workplace, it's the exact reason why people would want to rent your place in the future. So near your office right now, shortlist about five to eight different properties around and do the exact calculation where get the rental rates and the selling price and you calculate the yield from it. Anything above six, shortlist them and see which one you want. So if you are a little bit more patient, you can first rent for one year, then you decide what's good, what's bad, whether do you want to put your money within. And that would be a better solution instead of selling and buying a new place near your office. Because what if two years down the road, you're fired or you're no longer relevant, like all of us got replaced by AI. Then maybe your partner proposed to you, now you want to get married, then you will need to move to his place 30km away. <laughs> all these things will change. But if it's an investment, it's not an issue. You still have your own independent source of income. And I always like that dynamic within a relationship. I want to be with you because I want to, not because I need to. And that would be my recommendation. Hopefully this is helpful to you, Peggy. But I must say this lah, full respect to you for saving so much money, even after paying up 600,000 for an apartment. Wow. Thank you very much for sharing your story. And for those who still have any questions regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G, T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com where you can just DM me on Instagram, I-H-E-R-N-G. And I will see you guys on the next one. Ciao.